choppers and sawyers from across America returning to the heartland, Chicagoland in Tinley Park, Illinois. And 16 competitors shoot for four spots in the finals. It's a hybrid that uh, you really don't find in any other sport. You have to have that focus, but you have to have the athleticism and the physicality to back it up. There's a lot of man in there, you know. A lot of big, hairy men. It's the Steel Timber Sports U.S. Championships. If you're a chopper, a sawyer, a lumberjack sports competitor in this country, the biggest stage is the Steel Timber Sports Series. Presented by Ram, here we are. The U.S. Championships for 2016, our location, Tinley Park, Illinois, here in the Chicago Southland area. We're starting the last stage of this journey to the top. We're taking these 20 athletes who've come here to Tinley Park, splitting them into two pools, 10 in each pool. Today it's Pool B, Kevin, and we've got Mel Lentz, we've got Art Coger Jr., we've got last year's runner-up, Jason Lentz. Who are you watching in Pool B? Jason Lentz is the guy that I'm watching because, as you mentioned, he was runner-up. 2016 is here. He has another year under his belt. He has more maturity under his belt. I want to see how he approaches this sport. Has he finally brought the calmness to this steel timber sports stage that he has lacked in the past? All right, four spots in the championship on the line. None of these 10 guys are going to leave anything on the table. Semi-final action in the Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championships presented by Ram. Well, our first step in finding the four who will advance to the championships is not an easy step. In fact, these guys get no slack at all. This is the springboard. Springboard mirrors what two loggers might do if they were working in the woods on ground that wasn't flat. With the help of a springboard and notches in the tree, they create a flat working surface that they can stand on for falling. Competitors will use an ax and a pair of springboards to cut one four-hit hole, insert their board, a second board approximately six feet in the air, and finally chopping through an 11-inch pine log secured to the top of the nine-foot tall pole. Who will be ready to go now with discipline number one, the springboard chop. Let's run them down in this first heat on pole one, position number one, the veteran from Pennsylvania, Mike Esch, big man from Colorado, former collegiate champion, big Adam LaSalle, our guy, one of the best of all time, the super one, Super Dave Jewett from New York on position number three. And Calvin Willard, formerly of Montana, now making his home in Vermont. And we said in our Pool A show, Kevin, right, that almost none of these guys list this as their favorite. There is one exception, our guy, Super Dave. Yeah, Dave did not have a, a really solid run three, last year. And two, that's kind of one, uh, bracketed oh. him in one of the lower divisions with Springboard. But he is an exceptional Springboard cutter. And I think he's going to put on a bit of a clinic. Look at how quick he loaded that first board. Great flat setup, a bit of a hang-up. He got both the toe and the heel buried in that second pocket. And now he's in there. He's kind of pecking away at it. It's not a Dave Stewart move. You've got to get confident in that board hole. Get it bored in the back. Put your six clean hits in and Get on it. Super Dave, the look at the slam falling out of that right pine block. Calvin Willard, an exceptional springboard cutter as well. He showed up at a small town competition in Vermont probably a dozen years ago. Never even heard the name Calvin Willard. And he got up and smoked off a springboard job. I knew he'd be a force to be reckoned with. Great to see him stick with the sport. Dave Jewett just about finished with the front side of that block there. He'll turn. Yeah, good thing, too, because that is an ugly-looking front in the top side of that block. Very, very choppy-looking. There it is, Dave Jewett, 59.80, showing you the unofficial time. Not a clean cut up top. His up hits, one followed the other end, look very nice, but a real steppy, chopped-up, rabbit beaver look to the top side of the front of that block. It's not just a fist pump because I got a good time, but it's I feel good. I'm actually like have, trying to have a little fun this year. Whereas last year, I just held it internally that my body, you know, suffered physically from it. So, you know, every once in a while I have a little fun, a little fist pump, have some fun with the crowd and the announcers. It actually makes you cut a little better. Dave Jew had a big lead so far, just under a minute is time 59.44. The springboard chop. We have one more heat though, and some strong competitors in this one in the foreground. Probably the prominent figure of all time in American Timber Sports, Steel Timber Sports Series, the one and only Mel Lintz. Second position there, Matthew Marks, the competitor from New York. 
qualifying record, getting here to the semifinals, and right, the son of Mel Lintz, Timer's and a ready. huge, huge second place finisher last year. Contestants this ready. This is Jason Lentz, the big Three, man. Two, one, yeah, big go. is an understatement, but what I'm watching Jesus. for from Jason Lentz Jesus. is the Jesus. mental Jesus. calmness Jesus. that we see out of guys like Matt Kogan. The reason Matt Kogan has been a multi-time champion for us, and I want to see Jason settle in, use that horsepower to its maximum efficiency, and not just come out and absolutely assault these blocks. Looks like two good, clean pockets for Jason. Oh, and he misses, though, setting that second board. Let's see how it holds. Good board set. Look at Matt Marks, though, right with him. Well, Lentz taking a little extra time to get up there and get set. Don't know if that's an ideal board set at the top, but he's going to have at it. Well, it's, let's not also forget to mention that he's been doing this for 40 yes. plus years. So <laughs> when I get to be Mel's age, I hope I can get up to the first board, let alone <laughs> the second board. Three-time champ in the early 90s, and he's still going to put on a clinic here today. Jason Lentz, though, that one-minute time of Dave Jewett looks like it's going to be safe. A hang-up for Lentz. Jason Lentz, that is. And there it is. Jason Lentz on officially just over one minute. Well, just a few kinks at the end, but yes, Jason Lentz in his time of 103.77. Good enough for second place. Willard, Skirvin, and Mel Lentz round out the top five. And right on top, hey, in convincing fashion, Super Dave Jewett off to a super fast start here. Round number one, and Dave Jewett gets top points as we get ready for the stock saw. And in just a few moments, we'll meet a group of men who use their athletic skills on a daily basis. Chicago's best at the Chicago Fire Department. The Steel Temper Sports Series on ABC is brought to you by Ram, Guts, Glory, Ram. Duluth Trading, designed and tested by Tradesmen. And John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. Yours. Get in there, go ahead. You do it. You do it. Get in there. Get on my side where I'm at. All right. Put them in. Strike. Strike. Push it down. There you go. Push it down. All right. You're going to hit this right there. So hold on. Turn your hand around so it doesn't hit your thumb. Yep. Go ahead. Strike. Well, it sounds kind of silly, but like in our sport, we have to be, we have to execute like you have to execute. You go from a standstill to boom, go. Right. So it's not like you get a warm up, that sort of thing. Right. You go up and you have to execute and you have 30 seconds to do it. And if you don't do it, you're out, you're done. Right. right. So just like you guys, like these guys have to be able to pick it up and do it now. You know, that's. You got to figure out a way. Right? There's no second tries, especially with us, it's life or death. So, you know, you got to get in there and it's a job that the one person has to get done no matter what. Otherwise, you know, somebody doesn't go home. Hopefully it's not you, but hopefully it's not a civilian either. You know, there's a lot of things you're responding to that you really have to be smart, you have to be intelligent enough to figure it out or figure out a way past it. Athleticism, accuracy demanded of these firefighters and ditto for these competitors in the Steel Timber Sports Series. Each one of these disciplines correlates to a specific job in the woods. Back to Tinley Park Convention Center in Chicago land. Steel Timber Sports Series Championship presented by Ram Qualifier Pool B. Ten competitors going for four spots in the finals. So we're ready for discipline number two, the stock saw. This is the stock car racing in timber sports. Two equally matched steel MS660 one chainsaws are timed, tacked, and tuned to be within hundreds of a thousandth of a second of each other in the wood. Two matched 20 inch guide bars, two factory ground chains are on these saws, so the only variable between the bunks is the operator. Just around the Ram logo right now, 
In this contest, 16 inches of wood will be severed with one down cut, one up cut. Competitors trying to move slow and smooth, keeping the saw in the wood and feeding it wood as fast as possible. Action in the stock saw, fast moving, one cut down and one cut up. How did we get our time to beat? Well, one of the times to beat, laid down by Mike Sullivan. Good, solid effort gives him the win over Calvin Willis. This is the all Mike Sullivan show. At that time, wouldn't make it through the next heat. Mel Lentz and Arden Coger Jr. And there's Arden Coger with the top time to beat 12.09 seconds. A couple of guys with a chance to move out of the bottom half. The ramp total points picture right now and into the top with a good performance in the stock stall and stand number one, Mike Esch, Pennsylvania, and Colorado's Adam LaSalle, position two. Mike Esch struggled mightily in that springboard. We saw him, uh, do, like you say, lumbering to that second. I like that. Oh, he just looked really hard. Like, he's having a really hard time getting to that second board. He is a really solid power saw operator, though, as is Adam LaSalle. We're going to have another synchronized finish here. Oh, it's going to be Ash, though. Wow, Mike Ash putting an exclamation point on his stock saw run. The first run we've seen in this pool, sub 12 seconds. Yeah, Mike Ash officially 11.54. That's going to take over the lead for the time being. Adam LaSalle disappointing at 13.01. And I felt like that was a good run. I'm uh, kind of excited to see how that holds up, but uh, I'm really happy with that. Jason Lentz already has a second place finish. That's nine points in the first discipline of the day. Stock saw event. Position number one, he'll be going up against Matthew Marks. Well, I mentioned before, I'm, I'm watching and I'm waiting for that mental maturity, that calmness from Jason Lentz. There's no doubt he is Hands the tallest the competitor. He's uh, probably Hands one of the on strongest the competitor with Arden Colby Jr. Jr. in there as well. But he needs that mental toughness. We need that smooth, delivery and boy he's bringing it here so far in the stock saw yeah he's got a slight uh -oh, edge trouble here. for matt marks there he goes he did what i was saying in the other pool he's he knew he was coming out he reloaded he shot again let's see if he gets credit for that if he did get a successful up cut watch this cut from matt marks here's the down cut definitely a complete disc watch as he starts to come up here about a third of the way up the log you can just see a little bit too much chain and bar showing Impressive that he even noticed that from his perspective. That's the far side of the log. Some of these guys are just oblivious to that. They think they're cutting a full disc. They think they're having a great time, but they're uh, they're leaving a portion of it. But they're not. Turns out it's not such a great time, and you got to go back and make a third cut. Jason Lentz doing himself a lot of good right there already with a second place in his pocket from the first discipline of the day. The springboard chop can do no worse than third as it stands right now with one heat remaining in the stock saw. I'll boost my confidence going into the next uh, event. It's a standing block, and uh, I am the premier standing block cutter here in the 20 athletes coming up. So, uh, yeah, I'm feeling really good in the first three events. One last heat for Pool B in the stock saw here. It's going to be Dave Jewett, the points leader after the springboard chop, going up against Jeff Skirvin. Skirvin in a good spot, two fourth place coming into this heat. Skirvin getting some loving jeers from certain parts of our audience here. Uh, oh, yeah. Reminding him to put on his safety glasses. For the folks that tuned in last year, where we were in uh, New York City for the 30th, right. Skirvin ran Hands the entire the event sans safety Hands glasses. Ah, uh, shouldn't do that. Disqualified. Uh, yep. Jewett almost shaking his head right out of the gate. He didn't look confident with that. Both of these guys very heavy on the saws. We'll have to see how it pays off. Both these guys oh, going to be through the wood. Jewett somewhere around the 11 and a half second range, but he darts around to make sure he's got a complete cut. Skirvin with trouble. Dave Jewett, let me know how it feels about that. Dave Jewett attacking this stock saw run. He does not want to be kept in sixth place anymore. Rips through the top of it. A solid run. Not good enough, though, for the win in this pool. There we go with our final standings in the stock saw. And Jason Lentz, as we said, doing himself a world of good right there. Now a first and a second place in the first two disciplines of the day. Mike Ash in second place. Dave Jewett winding up third place. And Arden Coker Jr. coming up a little bit in the standings. All the way into fourth. The odd man out right now is Mike Sullivan.
on the way. The axes are coming out again. Fast and furious, the standing block chop is coming next for these competitors. All 10 of them trying to make four spots in the finals. Also on the way, pay tribute to one of the sports greats in a John Deere legacy moment, one of the great hot sawyers of all time, Harry Burnsworth. Harry Burnsworth, uh, yeah, the nickname that comes with Harry Burnsworth's name is Mr. Automatic. Um, yeah, he's always been automatic with that hot saw and stock saw. Oh, and he did it by a long shot. I'm on board with you. I'm now the vice president of the Harry Burnsworth fan club. He would be out there with just a face of steel. You would never see emotion out of him. Every hit was perfect, and he never got rattled by anything. Harry Burnsworth needs a good cut here, man. One of the parts of him belonging in the hall is competing at a high level and being one of the last Americans to win before the big international impact on the series. Everyone predicted he would win because he was just such a, such an effortless guy out there. Hey, Harry Burnsworth with a vengeance there. Huh? A new machine and he's learned how to run it well, beating Mel Lynch. That'll be a very quick time. The next event's the standing block chop. A 12 inch block is affixed to a stand. The athlete will start on one side, cut half the block, run around, cut the other half. Time ends when the block is severed. And that's the standing block chop. Walt Page from the West Coast side giving us the lowdown on the standing block chop. We have got that on the way. We're headed to the championships of the Steel Timber Sports Series for 2016. Pool B, 10 competitors, shooting for four places in the championship. Coming to you from Tinley Park, Illinois, and after two events with Jason Lentz on top, barely, over Dave Jewett, Willard, and Arden Koger, the four if we stopped it right now. But we got four more disciplines to go. Ready now for the standing block. Most people put me in the top five, you know, but but if I go on the day, I can definitely fall victim to, you know, my own, my own demons, you know. And if I'm, if I'm not in the mood, if I'm, I, I might not like the smell of the stage that day, and that'll put me off. And I just decide I want to be someplace else, and then it just, I can self-destruct. But anybody that can do that, that, there is an opposite to that. Now you get me on on a day where I am on, then, yeah, I, I could win any or all events. Heat number two, Mike Esch in block number one. Number two is going to be Super Dave Jewett, Mike Sullivan on three, Dave Jewett hanging very tough in this standing block pool B competition and the overall competition as well. David Jewett, a single point behind Jason Lentz at this, at this juncture. Wow, big, clean face opening up for Dave Jewett. Sullivan, a little bit of a smaller face. He's gonna have to run away from it. Jewett scampering around this block, closely followed by Esch and Sullivan. Dave's looking near to drive, looking far. There it is, though, Mike Esch. Mike Esch has been openly criticized for being too clean, too technical, putting hits in where they're supposed to go, not being flash or fancy, not taking any big risks, and the block is performing as anticipated. Well, you can see the block moving for Dave Jewett. There's four metal dogs pounded in around it with shims all the way around, wedging up any open airspace. Every time that block moves a fraction of an inch, it is robbing horsepower from his hits. Yeah, Mike Esch efficiently applying the power there. Staying within himself and coming out with a top time, 21.03. Jewett a little more than two seconds back of him and two more seconds back is Mike Sullivan. Heat number three for these Pool B competitors in the standing block. And of course, all these 10 are trying to make it into the top four who move on to the finals. Mel Lentz is in this one on station number one. He's currently outside the top four. Calvin Willard, his opponent, sits in third place as it stands right now. Timers this ready. has been a matchup that I've been waiting for. There's ready. certain competitors Three, that I like to two, watch do one, certain go. events, and I love watching Kelvin Willard take apart a standing block. He opens one and one, then goes into a two and two pattern and goes after those corners. He left himself a bit too much wood on the far side, 
but he's going to have, I think he'll have no problem making it up on the back. Mel Lentz coming in low on that down hit. There wow. it is, Willard off. Uh, Mel's chasing in that low line. You can see it barely came in above the front side over on the far side of that block. It's almost an even plane coming down through. Watch this, Mel, there it is. That hit skipped down too low. Now he's married to it, now he's committed. Either that or he has to go back and recut the top side of that face. He elected to go with it, punches it in the guts once, leaving still all that far wood. Now he's gonna come in and drive it in the near side. You see it just barely twist, but not by much. And now he's gotta go back and deal with that problematic far side. One hit doesn't get it done. He's got to go back after it some more. Well, Mel Lentz with one he won't look back fondly on. 24-8-4, and Calvin Willard goes sub 20 seconds to take over the top spot in the standing block. Final heat of the standing block, Arden Coger Jr. Known to cut pretty fast from time to time, going up against our points leader by a single point coming into this discipline over Dave Jewett, Jason Lentz. I think right, this is where man. Jason is going to distance Timers himself ready. from Jewett in the standing and block chop. Ready. Height, Three, muscle two, mass. One, He's oh. probably going to horse through this in a matter of about 15, 16 hits. Oh, a little bit of a bobble there. I'm getting really critical with these guys, but we're getting to our top seated axeman in this standing block chop. Left a little bit of near wood there. Arden Coker Jr. on the far side is about out of wood to cut. Oh, there it is, Jason Lentz. Left himself the real estate to get the job done. Arden Coker Jr. pinched himself off in the back side of that block. He had nowhere to swing, wound up coming in kind of flat, punching it in the guts, and it wasn't enough to get the job done. Jason Lentz, maybe taking a page out of his father's misfortune, and you can see there, clearly driving out into fresh air, a good clean finish from Jason Lentz. Jason Lentz blisters at 16.60 to take top points in the standing block, and Arden Coger Jr. behind, taking second and nine points when it's all said and done. Quick look at our Ram overall points, and there's Jason Lentz right there. Not a prohibitive lead, maybe a comfortable one at this point. Jewett, Willard, and Coger giving chase right now. Getting back to our sawing events, two of them left on the card. The single buck is coming up next. Well, out in front of the convention center here at Tenley Park, the Denty Moore folks are bringing us yet another competition. This is Lumberjack Sports, but with a decidedly different sort of group of competitors. Adrian Flick takes us behind the scenes. Have you ever heard of the term lumber sexual before? No. So this brings us to the end of our Dinty Moore Lumber Sexual Lumberjack competition. It took three hardworking, regular gentlemen who fit the trend of wearing flannel but not really having any idea what it was like to work in the woods. Guys who were regular guys, worked regular jobs, but maybe hadn't swung an axe or picked up a chainsaw before. Took him into the woods for three days, trained him up in three disciplines. This is the culmination of that experience. Hopefully they made some progress, a little bit of growth, and got him one step farther into knowing that timber sports was uh, not just putting on a flannel shirt. Smell that? That's what winning smells like. <laughs>
use this equipment and you don't respect it, if you cut yourself, you could hurt your saw. So don't do that. It's the Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championships for 2016. Here on the shores of Lake Michigan, Chicagoland, Tinley Park, Illinois. This beautiful convention center they have here, and we've got 10 choppers and sawyers shooting for four spots in the finals right now. Those four on top, Jason Lentz, Dave Jewett, Calvin Willard, and Arden Coger Jr. Fans at home now, pay close attention if you want a Gator. We'll be giving one lucky fan a John Deere Gator XUV 590i crossover utility vehicle valued at over $10,000 or a chance for other steel equipment prizes. Head over to steeltimbersports.com where you can enter for a chance to win. You can also enter for a chance by following us on Twitter at twitter.com slash timbersports and answering one of our weekly trivia questions along with using the hashtag timbersports. Enter online now. You could be riding a John Deere Gator soon. Now we're ready to go with the single buck. The single buck is often affectionately referred to as the misery whip. With times approaching 12 or 14 seconds to get through a 19 inch log, the fastest sprint in timber sports. Competitors use a specially tuned race only crosscut saw that has been laser cut and hand filed back and forth through the saw. The cutting teeth and the rakers work to work the wood fibers out as an oiler and wedger keeps the cookie from pinching on the saw. Fastest time, top to bottom wins. Well, the single buck got started pretty fast and furious. How we got the time to beat was this performance right here. Jason Lentz in just under 14 seconds. Just about ready for heat number two in the foreground. It's going to be Adam LaSalle going up against Mike Esch. Mike Esch holding in there in fifth place. Two points behind Arden Coger Jr. and Graham overall points. So Mike Esch has an opportunity here with a good performance in the single buck. But I've said before, Tommy, there's certain guys that I like to watch in certain disciplines. I like Adam LaSalle in the single buck. If you want to make sure your feet don't slide around on a uh, sawdust and wood chip covered deck, one way to do it is to anchor wood blocks into the deck. You're going to see guys do uh, different footwear, some gummy sold, rubber sold shoes. Some have logger caulks screwed into the bottom of old uh, outdoor soccer shoes. But if again, you want to know right, you're fast into the deck, Timer a good ready. set of foot blocks will do the job. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. We'll see if those foot blocks pay out for Mike Esch as he hoes his way through the first third of this block. Adam LaSalle, though, putting on a clinic over on stand number one. If he can keep it together. Wow. wow! Adam LaSalle diving through the bottom of that block, shaking his head, not pleased with that low 13 second cut. Well, there you go, Adam LaSalle, not pleased, but uh, the best time so far after two heats the 12.87. Mike Esch currently in third place. Well, I felt pretty confident with my saw, first of all. I, I was kind of estimating about a 13 second, low 13s, high 12 kind of wood that we were looking at. It's kind of weird to be able to judge wood, but um, I feel good about it. But I'm also very critical and uh, my own worst enemy in that regard. Calvin Willard in the foreground, Art Coker Jr. in the background there, both of them very much in the conversation for the top four. As we continue through the heats there. Single buck, who will be? I don't think I need to point out, we've got two very different right, body styles Time here. And that will translate into two Contestants very different ready. sawing styles. Three, Arden two, Coker Jr. One, openly oh. admits he has a saw that probably no one else can run because much like Richard Jordan, he runs on horsepower. Calvin Willard using his longer arms, bringing some physique, some technique, oh, but it's this. gonna be Arden Coger Jr. a 12-5-3 showing on the unofficial board. He may just have bested Adam LaSalle. Look at the use of those big stake arms from Arden Coger Jr. just horsing that saw down through the block. Contrast that with Calvin Willard. Watch the nose of this saw nearly disappear all the way back to those tiny little starting teeth. He's another competitor. He's getting every dollar's worth out of the saw. There it goes, completely gone back into the block. Arden Coker Jr. easily taking over the lead from Adam LaSalle with a good effort there. The single buck. Calvin Willard taking a little drop down there. Fifth place so far. They'll do no better than that. 
yeah, it was a good cut. Um, with no hangs, no uh, mistakes. Don't know if I could have went any faster. So I'll take that one. You know, Dave will probably, he, he should cut it under 12. I really think he should, but I gave it all I had. Final heat in the top two seeds in the single buck, a couple of old rivals, old friends as well. In the foreground, Mike Sullivan, back in the background, super Dave Jewett. Now these guys had breakfast together this morning and now we're duking it out in the single buck. Very similar song styles. Both have spent a lot of time under the tutelage of J.P. Mercier. Traditionally, historically speaking, if you will, advantage Jewett. Look at, look at the technique from Jewett. When Mike Slingler was teaching Maddie Slingler how to single block, he used Dave Jewett video. Look at him throwing his head, throwing his upper body in, every bit going into pushing that saw into the block and hoeing off that near wood. Could well be the winning time. We'll wait for the official. Going back to watch it, Dave Jewett here. Every inch of that saw, all the way to the handle, the nose going all the way in. You see him throwing his arms, shoulders, head, everything at it, looking for that winning time. Well, there you go. It was official, and it was the top time. Dave Jewett takes it all in the single buck there. Arden Coger Jr., another strong effort for second place. Adam LaSalle, Jason Lentz round out the top four. And now four events into our six disciplines there. Well, the top four has not changed, but Dave Jewett has moved up far closer to Jason Lentz in the overall points. Once again, only two disciplines left to go before it's all decided. And the single chopping event we have for you, up and down fast and furious, the underhand. Getting closer to finding our four who will move on to the championships of the Steel Timber Sports Series. You watch these guys compete and you say, hey, big guys with a ton of natural talent. That is true, but much, much more is required. Specific training. Adrian Flick will elaborate on this installment of Flicked Facts. One of the things people don't appreciate, there is the event and discipline preparation that goes into timber sports where you do the chopping, the sawing at home. Each one of these competitors has a chip yard where they have a saw stand and they have an underhand cradle and they have a springboard set up to practice the events at home exactly as they'd be done on the stage on the steel series. They also need to take care of their body, need to manage it so that they are strong and dynamic and can do these explosive things make through all six disciplines. So people often think Arden Kogler Jr. is strong as an ox. He has a torque rating that's stronger than most diesel engines. I would advocate the use of weight training, some sort of CrossFit work hardening, uh, in order to make a person harder, fitter, and tougher. Because to be successful in timber sports, you have to be tough. To be tough, you have to be fit. And to be fit, you got to be a little loose in the head. To be perfectly honest, because we all are. Once again, we are four disciplines down and two left to go. As we look through Pool B for our four qualifiers, let's take a look at Ram overall points in this 2016 Steel Timber Sports Series road to the championship. And those points right now, well, the top four again are the ones who are going right now. Calvin Willard, Coger, Jewett, Jason Lentz on top, and Mike Esch, Mike Sullivan, Mel Lentz have all got a shot at it. It's far from done with two events left to go. One of them, our last chopping event of the day. This is it, the underhand. And earlier, how we got our time to beat. Well, this was the first heat. It would be Matthew Marks taking the top time there with 24-39. Three in this heat, pretty important for Arden Koger Jr. with 28 Ram overall points, sitting in third place. As far as Mel Lentz and Mike Eshko, it's do or die time right now. Well, unless something goes terribly wrong, I, right, I'm going to say advantage Tyler's Arden ready. on this heat. Contestants Arden ready. by far has Three, the fastest two, swing one, speed oh. in the underhand chop of any of the competitors, and those big stake arms bring a lot of power with it. Both Mel Lentz and Mike Ash are great tactical choppers, but uh, look at this pace. Like it's just, it's just mind-numbing at this point. Uh-oh, trouble though for Arden Coger. Oh, there he there goes. He, he found it. 
few extra drivers in there. They didn't look like they were doing no, their job. And Arden, he's not pleased with it, too. He knows. So you heard me talk about this when we were in Pigeon Forge, when we were in New York City, when we've been in Norfolk. Arden Coger Jr. is focusing on swing speed. Watch this cut. 21 hits plus a turn in under 19 seconds. That is ridiculous. Arden Coger Jr. blistering it with an 18.88, positioning himself very well. Yet there is one more heat to go, but positioning himself well for the final round. Keep himself in the top four. My gosh, good time as well at 22.50. Three more left to go. One of them, this man, Super Dave Jewett. Second place and Ram overall points, just two behind. Jason Lentz, you see him right there in the middle. All right, gentlemen. Third Time man, Calvin ready. Willard there on the left. Contestants ready. Well, Dave's been doing a lot Three, of tinkering two, with his underhand one, chop go. over the years. I think he's finally just let it go and he's trying to do what he does fast. Jason hasn't been around long enough to, to tinker with his chop. He's bringing some serious horsepower. Opening bull on the backside drew a big slab for Jason. Jason Lentz waiting in the back of this block. Jewett may be outpacing him, but Jason Lentz is outmuscling him by one blow. Both these guys hanging in that low 20-second time. And there you go, no surprise, Arden Coker Jr. taking the top points in the underhand when it's all said and done. Jason Lentz doing his cause a lot of good right there with a strong second place. And Dave Jewett keeping his relationship to Jason Lentz point-wise. Going right there, finishing second to him. Mike Ash, Mel Lentz round out the top five. Yeah, I normally cut uh, eight and eight, even if it's a bad block. And uh, I don't know, there it should have came in eight and six, but I did reach my far wood. My dad just told me, so I got some things to work on for tomorrow, some improvements to make, and uh, hopefully I'll make them if I make it to tomorrow. So. Well, time is running out, and it's all about the Ram overall points. If you're not in the top four at the end of today, you are headed home. Right now, it's Jason Lentz, Dave Jewett, Arden Coger Jr., Calvin Willard, Mike Esch tied for that fourth spot, and anything can happen in our final event. That's almost a cliche after all these years, but that's the truth about the hot song. The Steel Timber Sports Series on ABC is brought to you by Ram. Guts, glory, Ram. Duluth Trading, designed and tested by tradesmen. And Dinty Moore. Lumberjacks eat more, Dinty Moore. Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championships for 2016 presented by Ram, who will be qualifying. Ten competitors shooting for four spots. We're coming to you near Chicago, Tinley Park, Illinois, in the Convention Center here. It has been a great day and one event left. After five events, our Ram overall points. Jason Lentz still on top, and look at that tie for the all-important fourth place between Calvin Willard, Mike Eshmel Lentz, also mathematically eligible to make it in. All the chopping events are in the books, and we have one more sawing left to go, and it's the most unpredictable one, the hot saw. The hot saw is contested when lumberjacks have been left in the garage too long over a cold winter with too many extra chainsaw parts, snowmobile parts, and little extra time. 383 cc's of alcohol-fueled fury. A perfectly good dirt bike gives up its heart and soul to power a chainsaw. From 250 all the way up to 383 cc's, Competitors try to make three cuts, two down, one up in six inches, allocated on a 19-inch white pine log. What has started as innocent racing tradition has become sort of the mad scientist Frankenstein part of timber sports. How about that? Time should be in the five to six second range as these contestants try to move basically a galloping horse at 65 horsepower up and down as smooth as possible. say so much can happen in the hot sauce, so volatile because of these temperamental engines. Arden Coger Jr. right there, obviously in full control, a good cut. By the look of that unofficial time, you know he's gonna be near the top when it's all said and done. 
Arden Coger's official time of 6.78. Hey, that could be good enough to win the competition, but in fact, it wouldn't last through the next heat. Here comes Jeff Skirvin, knocking out a 6.08 to take over the top time. Skirvin obviously loving him. The fact is that all these guys enjoy a sort of love-hate relationship with these saws that can cost over $6,500. Like, hey, funny, uh, I don't want you to get mad, but I just bought another hot saw. You know, that was uh, a conversation I had this spring, and it was, um, it was, it was warm and friendly. <laughs> Here we go, Adam LaSalle, Calvin Willard. Adam LaSalle has struggled today. Calvin Willard, we have his full attention right here. Came in with 30 points, tied with Mike Esch for that fourth spot. Mike Esch has laid down a time of 7.88. Calvin Willard's objective, really simple. Number one, beat 7.88. But now you throw in lights, camera, action, the big stage, the pressure of wanting to make it to the finals, all of the 10 million things that can go wrong with a hot saw. That 7.88 is maybe not as attainable as you might think. Hands on the wood. Hands on the wood. Get set. Things are looking up for Calvin Willard. That unofficial clock showing a mid six second run for the man from Vermont. Here's Calvin up to the block, a clean start, clean into the block. Very consistent cookie thickness if we gave away points for that. Boy, just solid as a new dollar right there. Calvin Willard had a job to do and did it uh, very effortlessly. Yeah, well, me and Mike Eish were tied, so going into that, and uh, he put up a nice smooth cut, and I had to beat his time, basically, in order to move on. So we both made good cuts. Mine just came out a little bit quicker, so yeah, it's good. Here we go with heat number four. Jason Lentz with 45 Ram overall points. He's untouchable. Jason Lentz is going to waltz right through that. The consequences of his cut is not going to have any bearing on the final four who go into the finals. And his father, Mel Lentz, his opponent in this heat. And Mel Lentz, well, after that cut by Calvin Willard, is going to finish him probably no worse than fourth place. There's too All much right, ground gentlemen. for Mel to make up from back Timer's at 23 ready. points. Contestants ready. Hands on the wood. Hands on the wood. Get set. Tommy, at a few points today, I said I've been waiting to see the mental maturity from Jason Lentz. And these are the moments that I'm talking about. That go gun went off, and Matt Bush always talked about that little fuse inside your brain. And what we just saw was Jason Lentz, we just saw his fuse just go poof. He got into the top of the wood, he got extremely violent with his saw, shoving it down through the bottom of the block. It sent it careening out of the end of the log. Then things got out of hand on the upcut, and I'm just gonna stop at that point because it just gets it gets too hairy at this point. <laughs> well, easy to see Jason Lentz's DQ, but look closely at this cut by Mel Lentz, particularly the upcut. Now you can cut out on the top, you can cut out on the bottom, but bear in mind you can also cut out on the sides. Run a little too thin on the sides, and that's exactly what Mel Lentz did, a DQ for him as well. Well, there you go, a double DQ for father and son, Mel and Jason Lentz. For Mel, well, it means he'll definitely not make it to the finals, out of the semifinal round for Jason Lentz. Fortunately for him, he had a strong enough lead. It's not going to affect his chances of landing in the top four either. Well, here we go, Dave Jewett coming into this sixth and final discipline with a good position, second place. Ram overall points behind Jason Lentz. Make himself three cuts here, and he can wind up on top of those four qualifiers. So, uh, again, a matter of just three cuts, collect the time, Dave is in. This is an interesting matchup. These guys cut seconds. together, they train together, they're both running Rotax machines. Dave Jewett, he does know the difference between a screwdriver and a bus driver, but he's not really a gearhead, let's face okay. it. Mike Sullivan will take that saw, not completely apart every night, but he nut and bolts that saw every competition so you can see where that pays off 
Jewett, though, has got a, a great support team back home and uh, he's got a really Hands strong one. Hands on the This should be a great race. Hands on the wood. Get set. Sullivan wow. making it look automatic, but he has a tabletop for a third cut. Well, Dave Jewett got his cut. He is in. He is going to the finals. Still waiting for Rich's call. Okay. Rich says it's good. Your winner, Mike Sullivan, in the hot sauce. Well, Mike Sullivan won't walk into the finals, but he is the big dog walking around in the hot saw at the end of this semi-final round for these Pool B competitors here. Five, seven, six, that is a super strong time. Ditto for Jeff Skirvin, good job there. Calvin Willard, Arden Coger Jr., your top four scores in the hot saw. Well, there we go, a little bit of a shakeup, but nothing changed in that top four except Calvin Willard beating out Mike Ash. So in this order, Dave Jewett, Arden Coger Jr., Jason Lentz, and Calvin Willard are moving on to the finals of the Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championships presented by Ram. It's time for the Ram Guts and Glory moment. Hey, let's not limit ourselves to a single moment. Let's take a look at the overall performance all day long by Super Dave Jewett. Both these guys oh, it's going to be Jewett. through the wood. Jewett somewhere around the 11 and a half second range. Look at this, throwing his head, throwing his upper body in, every bit going into pushing that saw into the block and holding off that near wood. And that's it with our four who move on from Pool B. Our eight-man field is set for the finals of the Steel Timber Sports Series presented by Ram. And we'll have that for you when we see you next time.